Hello and welcome to a special Prep Playbook Summer Edition. I'm Jim Rapier. Joining me today is Prep Sports writer Jarrett Roser, who will break down some of the recent LHSAA news. You ready to get going, Jarrett? Yeah, it's been an interesting summer. Ready to get the whole year going. All right, well, let's get into it right here. Jarrett, there was a recent resolution between the LHSAA and the Louisiana High School Officials Association, and the officials have been threatening not to officiate games this year. Can you shed a little bit of light on that? Yeah, that, that was one of the biggest things that happened throughout the summer that I kind of mentioned being an interesting summer. I think a lot of people are excited we're going to get started really soon because, as you mentioned, they threatened to not be on the field. But the two sides figured things out. Um, Eddie Bonine uh, kind of working from the LHSA side of things. You see the new executive director there. And Paula Rosa, the president of the LHSOA, the Officials Association, um, had a, several meetings tons of contact uh, representing their two sides got bigger groups together to talk about it and then um, just less than two weeks ago the two sides finalized a deal a four-year deal to uh, to grant the officials the pay raises that they had hoped to see uh, m months ago now and so it seems all clear now heading into the fall that'll all get voted on in January still by the principals but for now we're you know we're good it's game on basically game on exactly all right Jared, can you elaborate on the metro rural plan that has been a real hot topic lately that's what kind of last week picked up the slack that we suddenly had in the lhsa news cycle once the officials figured things out or the official situation was figured out uh, notre dame coach louis cook had bounced this idea around for a while now he and members of his staff had talked about you know maybe from their perspective the problems in louisiana that that people had put into a select and non-select uh, mind frame was more of a dynamic between the metro schools and the rural schools. And so now at the coaches clinic last week, uh, Coach Cook presented to the coaches from around the state this, this concept where uh, schools from major metro areas, uh, I think they figured out about eight of them, which includes a lot of the, you know, the bigger river parish areas and Ascension Parish around the state would be put on one side of a playoff situation, uh, those outside of those areas would be on another. And that's, I mean, it's kind of a complex background in its own right with just seeing differences as much as we've talked about the recruiting issues, just seeing the differences between those two types of schools in general. And so they're looking at that. Uh, folks on both sides, coaches and principals, are certainly intrigued by it so far, want to learn more about it. but. That could be the direction that things are going if, if people still continue to like what they hear. The picture that we saw on the screen, uh, for an example, was Notre Dame and Parkview Baptist, whereas they're on the same side of the bracket right now as part of the select bracket. They would right. be then on opposite sides of the bracket. Is that correct? Right. Mo most of the select schools do fall into the metro side of things. Notre Dame out in Crowley is an exception, being out there in Crowley, kind of between Lake Charles and, and Lafayette. Uh, so that would be an example of of two schools that we've seen play through the years, including in that 2012 state championship game that would be in different playoff brackets now. All right, well, that definitely a situation that bears watching. Let's move ahead real quick. Uh, Jarrett, some eligibility rulings recently have garnered interest, and how is the LHSAA operating under new leadership? Can you uh, fill us in on that? Well, when Eddie Bonine came in to his office, uh, he asked what were some of the issues that people felt had brought us to this point to the uh, select non-select situation that he walked into and a lot of people said they feel like rules hadn't necessarily been consistently enforced and they've seen a lot of issues with recruiting and and a lot of other uh, rules that, that j they just felt the the penalties maybe weren't what the handbook had said or that different things like that that they felt uncomfortable with uh, where maybe schools got away with with situations and maybe even transfers like uh, Marquise Darrensburg or exactly. Andre Anthony for and that's example. that's the two really marquee situations that we've seen of late Marquise Darrensburg pictured there uh, was at Destrehan obviously all the way through the state championship game this past year uh, he is now over at East St. John the other guy uh, Andre Anthony who had been at Miller McCoy and is now at Carr one of the state's better pass rushers both uh, recently ruled ineligible and a lot of folks that, that kind of caught their attention surprised them maybe maybe uh, folks feeling like given the details of those situations that, that those rulings were strict but at the end of the day Eddie Bonine's coming into a situation where he was told that was an issue and he wants to make sure he sticks with the rules as they're stated 
and eases some of that tension between the two sides that way. And then as much as whether it's select, non-select, metro, rural, you start talking about the fact that everyone always says at the end of the day you're going to be pointing at Curtis. Teams are going to say, you know, Curtis this or this private school this or this public school that's doing this. And if he feels like he can hold to the rules, be strict, make sure everything's going by, by the book, then it, he can say at the end of the day, you know, we're following the rules. You just kind of need to go play football now because everything is on the up and up. Exactly. Well, as usual, thanks for giving us some input, Jarrett. And uh, thanks for giving he being here and uh, I guess put pointing forward to football coming up. Yeah, thanks for coming back from Virginia on your vacation. <laughs> just, <laughs> just for this show. <laughs> I don't know about that. But don't forget, <laughs> you can follow all of Jarrett's work as all of our writers at highschoolsports.nola.com. And that's it for this summer edition of Prep Playbook. For Jarrett Roser, I'm Jim Rapier. Thanks for clicking on us, and we'll see you again soon.